Good afternoon, <clears throat> good evening, good morning, my YouTube family. Whenever you're watching this video, thanks so much for stopping by and visiting my channel. Thank you to my subscribers who've been with me and are still with me, praying with me uh, and encouraging me. Thank you for my new subscribers. Welcome. I thank in advance the subscribers who will join prayerfully and hopefully in the future. Um, I just had to drop down and just do a quick video. This won't be one of my laughing videos. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing, but that's not. Um, I just finished watching uh, several lives. One was Blessed Watkins, and I can't think of the other two, but um, many thoughts came to my mind, and I thought, well, why don't I share it? I know a lot of people are not interested in the um, good news, so to speak, or positive messages, so to speak, but, you know, when, uh, when something is put up on your heart and your spirit to say, you just go ahead and do it, and whoever needs it or whoever listens to it, they'll take it. Um, and do what they will with that. So, um, they were discussing basically the pandemic and the children and um, different effects it's having on different people, you know, across the country and the world, really. And especially with the kids and how the kids are not not sharing their discomfort or their fear or whatever about this particular uh, situation that we're in. And I sometimes wonder, it must be something that's uh, generational, so to speak. Um, and I'll give you an example. And I won't go into details, but I'm 60. During the time of my growing up in my period, my, my whole teaching or the things that my parents taught me were basically respect. And respect for others, respect for your elders, whatever. Respect, respect, respect. Um, I, on my new job, I, one of the ladies, she was asking me questions, and I kept saying, yes, ma'am. She said, you're going to have to stop with the yes, ma'am. <laughs> she said, uh, just say my name, Liz. Just say Liz. And I told her, I said, you know, at first I would say it's a Southern thing. I said, but that's how I was raised. Um, and some things are ingrained in you or so a part of you that you carry that with you on in adult life. And I don't think we really understand the importance of teaching the children, teaching our children or teaching uh, the upcoming generation, different things um, regarding life and the things that can happen thereof. One of the most important things I found out um, growing up was my mother taught us all the things about respect and all the things about honor and, you know, living a productive life and living a life, uh, you know, back in that time, pleasing to God and the importance of family and the importance of coming together and binding together as one. And nothing was more important than family. And nothing was more important than that bond. You know, regardless of how you may feel or what you may say to each other, you know, you still have that connection if no, if nowhere else through your blood because we are we came from the same womb, so to speak. The funny thing about that, out of all seven of us, we never, I never had an argument with any of my siblings. None of them. In all the years that we were raised together, never had a fight or an argument with my siblings. And we talked about that, I think, my brothers and I one day, how it was funny. We grew up and we never fought. But anyway, the one thing my mother didn't talk to us about is she kind of shared us away because you have to understand the period when she was raised. There were certain things we just didn't talk about, sex, anything dealing with sex or love or anything like that. We never really discussed it or never talked about it. So... In many ways, I kind of learned that from other people or I guess you can say on the street, so to speak, with friends. But I never knew how much information or how many things I did not realize or did not know about love, lust, compassion, all of that. Because that really wasn't taught. Well, I take that back. In the compassion area, yeah, we were because we were taught to do for others and, you know, not belittle others. And, you know, it wasn't as if we were rich, but if those of those that were more, less fortunate than I was or we were, you know, instead of being a negative, be a positive, help them in any kind of way. And um, when you do that, do that. She always quote the scripture, do it in secret so that God would get the glory out of it. Don't do it for, you know, show publicly, but just do it secretly. And just, you know, when you feel led to do something good for a person, do that. And so that's what we did when well, most of us did. But I think one of the major things that we've, we've, uh, how do I say it? have failed in many areas or many ways as is not sitting down and having those truthful and those open and honest conversations with our children or with our kids, with who, with whomever, 
that you would consider uh, not an adult, like a preteen and teen. Um, I never sat down and really had open discussions about that, about anything regarding life. And that's where all of this, this fear and all of this comes from and this, you know, not being able to talk with your parents about it or anything like that. Now, let, let me say this. Everybody's household isn't the same. Everybody's parents aren't the same. And so there are some things in some situations where you can't talk <laughs> to your parents. Let's just keep it real. Let's be real and honest. Because that, that mode of communication is not there, has never been there. So you know what's best for you in that situation. But I'm saying if you have that door opening or if you have that avenue where you can sit down and really have a, I want to say heart to heart, but when you can really have an open and honest conversation with your parents, please take advantage of that. Parents, please take advantage of the fact that there are things that your child is going through. There are things that your kids are dealing with that you may not understand because of the time that they're in now, you know, based on the time and where we were, but it was totally different. But look at it now. I was talking to my brother and he's very, very uh, open and honest with my niece, his daughter. And he was telling me some a discussion they had or something. And see, in my mind, I'm not prude, but it's just that's the way I was raised. I brought up the conversation he told me that they had. I thought, you told her about that? Wow, you said that? How can you tell her about that? And this, 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 this. And he had the same feeling that I had. He said, you know, mom never taught us or never just sat down or even dad never sat down and talked with us about the certain aspects of life in general, certain aspects of sex in general, nothing. And said. So, we basically what we didn't get in school, we got from friends and like I said, on the streets with different people and all that kind of stuff. And it led to a false uh, perception on many things in our lives. It, it just really did because we never experienced it and we never understood anything. And the funny thing is, it's not a matter of not understanding, but you don't, you don't know what's never being talked about. You, you're oblivious to a lot of things. So that's what happened with us. My parents did a great job with raising us, but those aspects of that nature of life, you know, uh, we were never really sat down and talked with. And so when they were talking about it in uh, Ms. Bless' chat, they were discussing the kids and how not so much that they verbalize it, but, but their physical actions, the things that they do, lets the parent know something is not right, something's wrong, something's bothering them. And so that was the main reason for me sitting down doing this video to say it's very, very important that you be that you have an open door policy with your children, that you uh, explain to them and uh, get them to understand the realness of life. So those things won't frighten them. Those things won't scare them. When things approach them, they won't be oblivious to, to what's going on. And I hate to keep bringing this up. The Bible says, teach your children, train a child up in the way that they should be. And when they grow older, they will not depart from it. The teachings, even in, in, in my case, the teachings of the respect and family, all of that's still a part of me. And I think that's one of the reasons why when my mother got sick, I was here. When my father got sick, I was here. Uh, I didn't bother anybody. I would call anybody as far as, you know, a whole lot of other people to do anything because it was ingrained in me that family do for family, you know, and family wants the best for their own. So I think that's one of the main reasons why I did what I did as far as taking care of my father, because my mom, she wasn't uh, sick like he was, but to be here for him because that was put placed in me. And to have open discussions, see, my father and I never had open discussions until he was sick. You know, granted, I thank God for it. A lot of it was late. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It would have been best, best to have those conversations early because I found out. My father had a lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom, but that was because how he was brought up and how he was raised and the things he had to endure during his time as a child. So I didn't realize he had that much wisdom and I didn't realize he had that much intelligence regarding things of life, just basic things of life and how to handle things and how to live your life and how to do things. So it was a blessing. It was a surprise, but it was a blessing that he and I had that conversation, you know, and those talks. But somewhere along the line, the, the, the lines of communication and the lines of family has been broken. And I've always wondered why or when did that happen or how did it happen that parents you know, didn't have that, that communication or that, that time 
with their kids to talk to them or teach them or just have a sit down with them and say, let's let's just go over some things. You know, it's kind of hard to start that when they're on a like a preteen or teen or adult, but to sit down when they're little, when they're small and do that and begin having talks with them then. What people don't realize, children are more intelligent at a very early age than we were. And I don't know, <laughs> it's kind of funny because a lot of things that my nieces, my niece would say or other my cousins that's real small, like four and five, the things they would say, it, it was almost as if, how, how did you know that? You know what? Because I didn't get to know such things like that until I was like 14, 13, 15, something like that. So how did your mind, how did you comprehend all of this that you're telling me? So their brains are a little more, how would I say it, hungry and thirsty and snatch up things faster than we did. So don't underestimate what your child may know, may not know, may understand, or may not understand. But sit down and begin to have those talks with your child and begin to have talks about life, about love, responsibility, uh, pride, whatever. Have those talks with them when they're young, very young, begin then. Because there are things my niece will tell me now that I, it just blows my mind because it shows a level of intelligence where many of, of us during our, my, my growth period, we just didn't know, you know, we didn't have that. Her level of understanding of different things. So that was one of the things I got out of blessed uh, Miss Watkins uh, live earlier was that you, you you have to have that sit down. And I understand people will say, well, you know, we don't have that time and we don't have this. My parents both worked. Um, my father worked two jobs and then my mother was a nurse. So it wasn't as if they had all the time in the world to have these sit downs and all this and do this. But they made the time. So you have to see what's what's important to you. What I mean, we've made this family, we have this family. What's important? Is it important that we get make all the money we can, which in you know, to live or to survive or to pay our bills, whatever? But we also need to have that same we not sit down and have that talk with our kids so they can understand living and life. So they took out the time to have those sit downs. And then I guess in a lot of cases, a lot of kids are missing now. Back then, we had aunts and uncles you know, who also would sit down and have those talks with us. You know, I mean, just general conversations. Now, back then, you know, they would say, you know, children shouldn't sit around, you know, older people or adults. But that's all I sat around growing up. Mostly all the friends I had were like adults. They were maybe like 10 years older than me or something. And so I always had that avenue to talk to somebody or talk to them about different things that was going on. Then I had my aunts who, again... An, another ear to hear or another ear to listen to concerns I may have had or something like that. So again, we had that family bond and that family connection, that thing that was put in us when we were kids about family. That's not placed within kids today. And that bond and, and the institute of family has been lost somewhere. And I think that's why a lot of our kids, a lot of children, whatever, go astray or, or fall into different things they shouldn't or you know, just make, well, you're going to make bad decisions either way it go, but make irrational decisions. You have to sit down and have that talk and have those talks and have that communication with your kids, just like you would have with anybody else. Because you have to understand they're going to be coming up in a world as like as you did or as anybody else does, you know. And there are things they need to know and there are things they need to understand. No, the world is not a fair place all the time. No, it's not always good. No. You know, it's not always the best of times or the best of things that's happening in your life. But you need to teach them how to deal with that and to understand what they're going through and to be able to come to you and talk to you about those things and speak to you openly, openly. That's the thing about those things, you know, because you want a healthy child, not not just physically, but mentally, if you can, with your children. And so that's very important. So that was one of the things that they were discussing uh, in Bless Watkins' uh, live earlier today. And then the other thing that came across my mind was, you know, the breakdown of who we are. And what did we lose the consciousness of who we are or our purpose? My, my whole thing now is purpose. Because it's important for me to understand what is my purpose? You know, is it to come, is it to beat down, destroy, uh, kill, 
you know, whatever other people? Or is it to be not so much of a beacon or a light, but to be someone that someone can come to that respects me, respects my my thoughts, my opinions, who we can sit down and have an open conversation without any judgment. So I can, I, in that case, I can do that. What you may say may, you know, may kind of turn me off a little bit. It may shock me. <laughs> Not much will, but shock me. Sir. But can you come to me and just talk? And people have said that I'm not a very social person. When I say that, I mean, I'm I, like I said, I'm very introverted and very into my kind of to myself. And I've always been that way. I've always had that little circle that I connected with. And outside that circle, you know, I, you know, you, 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 you're cordial or whatever. But that was just that circle. So I never went outside that particular circle of people. Um, so it's. I think it's just important, I guess, in my in my eyes to say that it's important to have that little circle or that little group or that little opening to where if you don't have that with your parents, if you don't, because everybody doesn't. And let's not be let's not be fooled. Everybody does not have or even with family members, you don't have that, because like I said, somewhere the unit of the family or the process of the family has broke has broken down. So that's not there. That's why a lot of people turn to all kind of alternative things to feel voids or to feel complete or to feel ease the pain that they're having at that moment. But we had that. I had that. A lot of us had that. And that helped us because it gave us a better understanding <clears throat> of life. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to talk on was um, that came to my mind was individuality. And for the most part, that's understanding who you are. Most of us, we do things because we just do it or it may feel good or we like certain things. Or certain, but we've never taken the time out to understand what is it within us that we really desire. What What's our heart's desire? See, and I take that from my experience because, again, my whole thing was as long as somebody else or the people that are around me or the people that come to me are happy, then I'm OK. I never voiced what I really wanted. I never voiced what I what I really felt. Because to me it wasn't important. It was about servitude to others in that in, in essence. I'm just gonna be honest with you. And so not not stupid stuff. Don't get me wrong, I ain't crazy. But it was servitude to others and being there for others. There are people through my whole life and even now who will come to me who doesn't know me in person and just begin talking to me about things they're going through in their life the issues that they're having. And sometimes I wonder, why are you telling, I don't know you. I mean, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying in my mind, wow, you're sharing this with me and I don't know you. Uh, you know, we've just met. And some people say, I'm not sure what it is. I have that demeanor. I'm not sure what it is. But people come and share their stories with me, share their lives with me, share their downfalls, their uh, uprisings. Most of the time it's the downfalls is when they're going through something. Um, to me, number one, sometimes it's a sad commentary because you have to come to a stranger, someone you don't know, per, you know, really, um, and empty yourself of the pain or the things that you're going through. And in my mind, it's like it's a sad thing that you don't have anybody else outside of a stranger to go to, to really share these deep feelings or deep emotions that you're having. Um, number one is sad, but number two is a blessing because you have someone that you can come to. That you can talk to us or spill your guts out to whatever, and it'll never be re resurfaced. It'll never be discussed with anybody else. Uh, that's another thing about me. Um, and I'm not tooting my horn. I'm just telling you how I am, what you tell me, what people tell me. It's kept there. I've never been one to feel like I need to to share anything about somebody else's, what they tell me with anybody else. That's why I don't understand the YouTube thing. I do and I don't because, you know, people can be, you know, uh, last week we could be, this is my, this is my boo, my, my friend, you know, she rides hard for me. She this, he does that for me. And we would never break up and we would never have this, 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 and this. And then three days later, that so-and-so MFB, I never did like that so-and-so, so-and-so, so I just, you know, put up with that so-and-so. So I don't want to be fake like that. Does that make sense? You know, and then everything you've told me, everything we've ever done, good or bad or indifferent, 
you come in and, and, and expose all of it or you want to share all of it because at this point now, we're no longer friends. I don't do that. I really don't. I've never done that. Even when I've felt fallen out with different people, I've never got anywhere on a public platform or anywhere or got behind their back. So, you know, so-and-so, but you don't know what they because they did so-and-so, so-and-so, and they like this. And this, 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 this. I've never done that. Because it doesn't change the fact that I was a part of you and you were a part of me and whatever transpired to make us break that, you know, that's what it, that's what happened. But it doesn't mean I go out and try to smear you, destroy you, defame you and share all the secrets that you share with me, especially those things I know that were, that were hurting to you that really touched your life or changed your life in some dramatic way. I've never done done that. And I don't know if people sense that when they come to me and talk to me about the, the the things they're going through in their life. I'm not really sure. But I question that a lot. Was was anything ever genuine? I know we say we don't know each other on YouTube. It's an application. Um, and all I say is, in my case, what you see, it really is what you get. There's no variation to me at all. You know, I'm, I'm not going to fake in front of you or anything like that. If, if I don't, if I feel at, you know, uneased towards you or something like that, then I know how to just keep a distance. And that's just me. I'm not going to suck up and toot your horn and all this, knowing I don't like you for an ulterior motive or ulterior purpose, because my mind doesn't think like that. It doesn't go in that area or that direction. So I would never do that. But that's what shocks me. And that's what shocks me really in this uh, particular area of YouTube. One, one day somebody could be on there, I'll help you get your channel this, not with me. I saw that somewhere else. And, you know, whatever you need, I'll be there. Then the next two days, F-U-U-M-F so-and-so. It just, it just throws me. Because at that point, it's like, was anything ever really just real? Even even if it's just a YouTube, somebody says it's not such a word, a YouTube ship or YouTube connection or YouTube friendship, anything like that, or an associate. You know, where where is the truth and where's the realness and all of that? There's no need for me to get on here and and just blow, 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 blow out, <laughs> you know, because of what somebody else says or what somebody else feels or thinks of me. Because as many of you say, many of you don't really know the person that you're talking about. And so many things are lies. Until How can you actually and honestly really grasp a lot of things when so many people lie and make up things or spin stories like I've heard, you know, to either cause friction or to make the person look bad. To me, it's not that serious. It's, it really isn't. Not that, because like I said before, you can tell the truth. And for many people, the truth is enough, you know, regarding certain people's lives. The truth is way more than enough without you having to make up a lie to make you question certain people or question certain, certain things that they do. But <laughs> I just wanted to come on right quicker, like I said, um... And talk on that because for some reason that that peaked in my interest and peaked in my spirit. And I said, well, I wonder what's really going on and how, do people really sit down and think about different things? And do they really think about the motives? I don't think you unconsciously go into anything when you, when you befriend certain people or you connect with certain people for whatever reason. I think there's a conscious um, effort. And a conscious thought that I'm going to connect with this person. Maybe because they know this person. I want to get this information. It's always something that's kind of a little bit on the devious side. You know? <laughs> as you know, it's never anything just it is what it is, as you all always say. It's not that. But I just wanted to come and talk on that for a minute. Um, because I enjoyed that panel that they had. And I, some of the things they spoke about, spoke of on. I think those things, but I just never really talk about them. I think on a lot of stuff I never talk about. And I thought it'd be a nice avenue to kind of share that, to have have that bond, have that communication, have that open door policy with the people in your family, with the ones you, well, with the ones you trust or the ones you feel you can trust or go to and, and talk with. Don't, don't allow that stuff to bottle up inside of you and implant a spirit of fear and of doubt. And, and all these other things that will come to hinder your growth, spiritual or naturally speaking. You know what I'm saying? You know who to speak with. You know who to talk with about the things you're dealing with. But at least have that. Because for a long time, like I said, now once I got into the church, which that's going to be another video, I, I just prayed about it. I just 
you know, talk to God about it like I do now. I just sit in the bed and talk to God about it and keep going and leave it at that. I don't get on the phone and call people, tell them, you know, this, this, this is happening. And I think the most open I've ever been in my entire life is when I got on here and shared uh, different things about my father with you guys and the things I was dealing with with him because I needed that other outlet, I guess. And then to share him with you guys to see what I'm going through and, you know, the things he has to deal with with his illness at the time and his sickness. I just want to share that. That was a part of who I am and a part of my life. And I want to share that with you guys. So I just think we need to break down and see where the, the communication, whether the barriers come and what, what caused the barriers. And can those barriers be broken down? Can you tear down those walls so I can have a conversation with my child so I can understand what's going on with him or her? So they won't fall into the hands of all these other things that's going on or they won't feel so afraid that they be, they can't live because they're so bound up by fear. And it stops the progress of them. I'm not going to get emotional. But you need to sit down and have those conversations with your children, with those you love. And then you need to sit down and really understand, what is my purpose? You know, it's got to be something greater and bigger than constantly fighting and screaming and yelling on YouTube. And I'm not saying, and when I say that, I have to always say, I'm not saying dumb beef. I mean, that's, many of us got here, however we got here. It was through a beef or something of some kind, but that's not all about, that's not all who you're about. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not the only thing that make, make up your character or the essence of who you are. It's constantly fighting, or constantly fighting the same people. The same conversations over and over. And at some at some point, there's got to be a shift to something better. Have the people that's got. It's like there's not a balance when you come here most of the time, and you have to have a balance, even on YouTube. I think because you have to have it in your life. You can't always be uh, stress, 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 fighting, 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 fighting in your real life. It's exhausting. It's it's physically and mentally destroying. You, your health, it's, I think it's nothing, there's nothing wrong, in my mind, there's nothing wrong with beefing, you know, how you, whatever you do, but it's just the extent that you go with the beef, and then that's all they associate you, your name with is the beef. There's more to you, and so in some cases, bring that, bring that more to you, to you two. Have the beef, but have like a balance, you know what I'm saying? So it's not always me on here yelling and screaming and cussing. Not all the every time I'm on, that's that's all I do. Because at the bottom line is, it does not matter. It's not warranting me anything that will produce anything positive or produce any growth within me. So, as you guys say, the bottom line at the end of the, at the end of the day. I've got to be complete in who I am, regardless of what I've done or who I do or whatever. I've got to be complete in who I am and still be able to respect and love the person that I am and make sure whatever I have put out that day or, or in communicating with other people or just in my walk, I have not hurt, harmed, or caused anybody to go astray or be depressed or be angry. You know, the Bible says don't let the sun go down on your on your anger. And, you know, don't go to bed mad and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's kind of hard when you're on your 24-7 cussing. But that's me. But I just want to stop and say that uh, because that was on my mind. I hope you guys are having a great Sunday. I'm still having a little sinus issues. You know, the weather's changing here, so my sinuses are messed up. Um, and so I'm having breathing issues. But Please be careful and please be aware. Be aware that some things are much bigger than you are. A lot, a lot of things really are. And do you want to be a part of that bigger picture? Or do you want to be boxing that little frame? You know, back then they had the little five by seven picture that you stuck up on a little shelf and there you sit, dormant, stagnant, not growing, not moving, not progressing, You but you're just there. You've got to... I don't know, I guess it's something that's put in you at birth or something that's in you. You've got to always want to know more, understand more, learn more, get a better understanding of more of life and what's really going on. But that's where my basic thoughts are. And I hope this, I know it's not whatever, but I hope this interests you. And I hope the conversation that I've had with you has been interesting and enlightening in some way. 
I'm going to go live at some point. I want to talk. Uh, Kwani had a panel. Uh, they were talking about the Bible and different things. And I so want to do a panel on that badly. But I don't want to get it roped up into a lot of negativity, but just truth and understand how we really feel regarding the Bible, Christianity, things of that nature, because I think that would be an interesting topic since that's one topic we kind of shy away from because we're not in the, I guess, church sector, but it doesn't have to be in the church sector. We can have it here because many of us wrestle with things in the Bible. We just never discussed it and never told anybody about that. And I think it would be good to really share our true feelings when it comes to Christianity, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, the universe, life. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I thank you guys for listening, uh, sticking around this long to listen because I know I'm going to talk this long. Yeah, <laughs> I really don't. Um, please like and please subscribe. Thank you to my subscribers again. You guys have a beautiful Sunday. And if I'm not back soon, a beautiful week. Know that I love you. But God loves you so, so, so much more. You guys be blessed, okay? Bye-bye.